Okay, everyone. Shalom uvracha. Welcome. Today is Wednesday, June 19th, and this is the United Orthodox Synagogue's Lunch and Learn, still being held virtually, uh, but hopefully, hopefully soon, we'll come back together in person. Uh, today, we are going to be studying a mitzvah from Parshat Korach, uh, as this week, uh, this Shabbat, we read uh, Parshat uh, Korach, and we are studying a mitzvah of the of the week. That's uh, this year's uh, topic, and uh, I will share the screen. We have a fascinating mitzvah uh, to to share to talk about uh, today, and um, I'm looking forward to it. So let's jump right in. This is mitzvah number three hundred and eighty nine. It is the prohibition of a Kohen doing a Levi's work or a Levi doing a Kohen's work in the Beit HaMikdash. We know that in the Beit HaMikdash, there were some jobs which were set aside for Kohanim, and there were some jobs which were set aside for Levi'im. And the Torah tells us that there is a prohibition for a Kohen to do a Levi's job or a Levi to do a Kohen's job. In addition... There's this independent prohibition of a non kohen or a non levi called a czar to do any of the avoda, any of the work uh, in the uh, in the Beit Hamikdash. Um, but so, but that so that sort of parallels this in the sense that, as far as let's say the kohen's work is concerned, the levi is considered a czar, is considered a non kohen, is considered a stranger, and is not allowed to do to do the work. So let's look at the mitzvah. Then we'll look at the Sefer Achinuch's explanation of why this is a prohibition. Then we'll look at another interesting idea related to this in terms of everyone doing what they're supposed to be doing. Then we'll look at some halachic applications of this, pro, uh, of this prohibition. And maybe we'll get uh, to one other item uh, if, we have, if we have time. So let's jump right in to the mitzvah. Mitzvah number 389, that the priests may not be involved in the service that the Leviim have to do, and the Leviim do not do what the Kohanim have to do. Ella, kol echad That's the key. Everyone does the job that they have been assigned to do. As it says in this week's pasuk, ish this week's parsha, ish ish, al avodato ve al masao. Each person, each man, to his service and to his load. The lashon haminiya sheba bazehu shnemar beliviim. This is, I'm sorry, this is this week's parsha. Ach el klei hakodesh ve al mizbech lo yekrivu viacharekein shav hakatu. The language of the prevention, the pro- prohibition, we have in the Pasuk, but to the vessels of the holy and to the altar they shall not approach. And afterwards, the verse talks about it again, and they shall not die, also they and also you, meaning to say with this, that you too, you are included in this negative command. Sorry about that. Just like you, the Kohanim, the Levim are not allowed to do your work. You are also forbidden from doing, um, from doing their work. The so that's that's the that's the general prohibition. Now we're going to see some uh, interesting issues uh, related to this, and then we're going to get to the to the reason. The lashon sifri, the midrash says as follows: El klei hakodesh from his beach azhara v'lo yamutu onesh to the vessels of the holy one and to the altar. It's is the warning, and they shall not die. Meaning, this is an Easter. 
that's punishable by death, a prohibition that's punishable by death, only Ella Halavim Sha Anushimu Masirin Alavodat Horanim Konim Alavodat Halavim Minayin. The Pasuk is only explicit about the prohibition of the Leviim doing the work of the Kohanim, but what about the Kohanim not doing the work of the Leviim? Tamanomar Gam Atem, you also. Umatsanu? Shebikesh Rabbi Yoshua ben Hananya Lisayed Rabbi Yochan ben Good Goda. This is interesting. We have a situation. The, the Midrash tells us a story. Rabbi Yoshua ben Hananya wanted to help Rabbi Yochanan ben Gudgoda to close the doors, which was the job of the Levian. Now they were both Levian. So listen to this. He said, don't do it. Amarlo chazor la He said to him, go back. Because you are already, meaning you're about to be liable on your life for a prohibition. I am someone who's in charge of the gate, and you are a singer. So what's really interesting here is not only is the Sefer Achinuch teaching us that a Kohen can't do a Levi's job, and a Levi can't do a Kohen's job, it's teaching us that a Kohen that a levy can't do another levy's job. And uh, because one of them was Min Arim, the gatekeeper, and one of them was, was the Mishorim, the singer, and he said, don't do my job. Wow. Right? That any levy that does not do the work that was designated to him, is liable for death by the hands of heaven. And similarly, the Kohanim are warned, that the Kohanim not do the Levim work. However, if the Kohen does a Levi's job, it's not a capital offense. It gets lashes. It gets lashes. What about if they only touch it? It's not a question of touching what you shouldn't touch. It's only a prohibition of doing the uh, avodah. Okay. So that's the prohibition. A Kohen can't do a Levi's work. A Levi can't do a Kohen's work. And we even saw in the story that we had of um, Rabbi Yochanan ben Godgoya Gudgada and Rabbi Yoshua ben Hanania, that even one levy who has one job is not allowed to do the job of another levy. Okay, I see Shula has a question, and here is what we should be thinking about as Shula asks the question is why? Why not? Why can't one levy do another levy's job? Why can't a Cohen do a Cohen's job? What's the big deal? Okay, Shula, please unmute and go ahead. You have to unmute, Shula. Who, the question is, who is uh, handling the kelim? Because they said that nobody has to do uh, the work with the clay kodesh. No, no, not no, the, no, one's do, no one's allowed to do the work of the clay kodesh that's not theirs. The Levian carried the, carried the kelim from place to place in the Midbar, and the Kohanim did the Avodah with the Kalim in the Beit HaMikdash. So when it was time for the Kohanim to use them, the Kohanim had to use them. When it was time for the Levim to transport them, the Levim transported them. So why they said that we shouldn't have, nobody should handle the Kalei Kodesh? No, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the Torah telling the Levim not to handle the Kalei Kodesh in the context of the Avodah, because only the Kohanim are allowed to do that. I see. So, all right. Okay, okay. Any other co questions? Yes, Rabbi. Yes, hey, Rabbi. What if there's not a uh, Levi, can the Cohen do a Dokken? Oh, good question. Yeah, and now, now day and age, the Cohen would wash their own hands. That's a good question, even though that's really the job of the Levi. But I think this only applies in the Beit HaMikdash per se. Oh, okay. Excellent question. But now I have a question, why? Why is this, uh, this is uh, like so serious that the Torah has to tell us that a Kohen can't do a Levi's job, a Levi can't do a Kohen's job? Why not? 
Any, any, any suggestions? Each one has his job. I mean, it's... Um... Specifically, everybody has its own responsibility. Nobody should interfere with anybody else's. Okay, let's see what the Sefer Achinuch says. Mishar Sheha Mitzvah. Lefi she'avodat shte kitot elahi avoda yikara u mikudeshet. Since each of the, the work of the two groups is very precious and holy, alkein sricha hamilacha lihishamer ma'od min hayeush. Right? These are very important jobs. And therefore, we have to make sure that they don't become abandoned. Min ha'atzala v'hashichicha. From from laziness or forgetfulness. Ve'ain safek. Now the Shev Rechinuch gives us a very interesting insight into human nature. Ve'ain safek. Hikol milacha hamutelet al shnei anashim. Any job that has two people responsible for it, o yoter or more, hapshia mitsuyabo yoter mi malacha hamutelet al ha'echad levado. There is a greater chance that it will be neglected than there would be if only one person would be involved. Because what's going to happen if two people are involved? I'm in, I'll, Shula's, going to, uh, Shula's going to take care of it. And Shula's going to say, Rabbi Gelman's going to take care of it. Right? Ki harbe pamim yismuchu shnehem kol echad al chaviro v'tit batel ha and no one's going to end up doing it. Zed davar barur lechol adam. That, he says, is obvious to people. V'derech mashal amru zuchonam levracha, and the rabbis had a way of saying this, al kayotzi bazek, kideira debe shotve, a pot of two partners, or a stew of two partners, lo chamima v'lo karira. It doesn't get hot, it's not hot or cold. I mean, the people just sort of ignore it and it just sort of sits on the, on the lukewarm fire, never getting totally hot the way it's supposed to be or maybe never getting cooled off the way it's supposed to be. No one does their job. Kedera debe shitfe lo chamima velo karira. So here it's so interesting, right, that the Sefer Achinuch just gives us an insight into human nature as an explanation for why, for why this halacha exists. That if the Levian thought of Kohanim were going to do it, and the Kohanim thought the Levim were going to do it. No one was going to, no one would do it. It would totally get ignored. And since these are very important and sanctified activities, the Torah had to make sure that they get taken care of. That's the Sefer Achinos explanation as to why there is a prohibition against the Kohen doing the Kohen's job, the Levi's job, excuse me, and the Levi doing the, 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 the Levi's job. Within their own community, they'll make sure that it gets done. But once it's outside their direct control, all bets are off, and they're not going to be able to do it. Okay, that is a safer Achim. Let's stop there for a second and see if anyone has any comments or questions on that idea. Any thoughts? Anyone disagree? Anyone have a different view of human nature or different experience of human nature? All right, I see we've all worked uh, in teams before. Yes, Rosalie, go ahead. That's exactly what I was going to say. I've always worked in a team. And um, because just in case like somebody was sick or something happened and somebody couldn't do something, there was always somebody else that could pick up and do that, that job. Ah, interesting. So yeah, it could be that the Sefer Achinuch is talking about a situation where you're not in a team, you're not, you don't have a unified purpose um, as opposed to where you do have a team because all the Levium can work together. And all the Kohanim can work together, but not between teams, right? Not between Kohanim and Levim, because then the whole team of Kohanim will think the Levim is going to do it, and the whole team of the Levim will think that the Kohanim are going to do it, and that's, that's a recipe for disaster. But maybe if there's a sort of 
shared sense of responsibility, uh, then it would be okay. And in fact, I don't know if we're going to get to it, but that is the view of the uh, Torah Tamima. He says uh, that, because I'll just quickly show you, right? We have other verses that seem to contradict this, right? We have a verse in Kohelet, Tovim Hashnaim in Haechad. Two is better than one. Well, what about what we just said? If two is better than one, why can't we have more than one person responsible for each, uh, each activity? And so the, commenting on this, the Torah Tamima says, Tovim Hashnaim, Shenosin Vinot Nimbaprak Matia Min Haechad. Two are better in business than one. If one falls, like Rosalie said, the other one's going to lift them up. So, but there again, it could be that it's referring specifically to a situation where they have a shared sense of responsibility and it's really both there. Uh, project, as Rashi says, we each rely on each other, and since we each rely on each other, and we know that, uh, then um, then we are have a better chance of everyone doing, of, of taking care of the job. Okay, go ahead, Ellie. Um, am I on? Yeah. I, I, it seems that when um, it's really important to Hashem, structure and order, and that's a way of getting structure and order, like a say, the Seder at Pesach, structure and order are really important. Right. When, it, when it's a really a, a very elevated thing that you're doing that's incredibly important to Hashem for his reasons, and we, can, we, we do a good job of guessing at what his reasons are. So um, when, when it's lesser, when there's a lesser thing, then he wants us to work together in a group and be communal. Okay, excellent, right. Okay, so sometimes we have a communal thing, but sometimes we need absolute structure and order certainly when it comes to the Avodah in the Beit HaMikdash. Let me just show you the, um, the Rambam here in Mor Nebuchad. He says as follows, V'chein is here kol adam me'ovdei HaMikdash, that all those who worked in the Beit HaMikdash, shelo yitasek b'melechet chavero, not to do, not to work in the other's field, ki ha'melachot v'asakim ha'mesurim l'rabim, im lo when it comes to work assigned to, partic- uh, to, the, to, the, to the people, if one person is not specifically assigned, there's going to be carelessness and neglect from everything. He says, this is, explains also, while there are different rules of sanctity in different places, Temple Mount, uh, different areas in the, in the Beit HaMikdash, was to rise, to raise the element of respect. Additional reverence, everyone who approached it. And so we have this idea that, again, these are very important, things you're supposed to do. And it, it sounds like also the, the, what the Rambam is saying is the, the more holy the place, the less people that were allowed to be there, right? The, the cl- best example of this is the Kodesh HaKadashim on Yom Kippur, that only the Kohen Gadol was allowed to be there on Yom Kippur. There was only one person in the world who was able to do that Avodah on, uh, on Yom Kippur. Okay, so that is answer number one as to why it is that the Kohen can't do the Levi's job and the Levi can't do the Kohen's job. I want to uh, skip something and come to a different explanation and then maybe we'll come back to this. Okay. Um, Oops, I hope I did not forget it. Uh Uh-oh, hold on. Uh-oh. Okay, let me see if I can find it real quick uh, because it was really, really lovely and I definitely want to share it with you. Let's see if I can put it in real quick here. So we have the Morna Vuchim and here we go. Found it. Oh, here we go. Okay. So this is, let me share the screen again. This is from the Meshech Chochmah. 
I'll tell you a little about the author of the Mesha Chachma in a moment. Um, I have to actually stop sharing to do that. And then share again. I'll, and I'll tell you about the Mesha Chachma. Okay, so the Mesha Chachma's name was Rabbi Meir Simcha of Devinsk. He lived from 1843 to 1926. Um, he was born in Lithuania, and uh, he um, is very well known. He was a Kohen, which is appropriate uh, for our uh, topic today. And um, he spent a good part of his career in Devinsk, which is why he's called Mayor Simcha of Devinsk. And he's also known as the Meshech Chachma, because that's the name of the book uh, that, um, that he wrote. Um, and uh, he wrote other books uh, as well. He wrote something on the Rambam. He wrote uh, Chidushim, new interpretations of various tractates of the Talmud. And uh, he has some Shelot Uchuvot addressing issues of halacha. And again, he's most well known for his commentary on Chumash called the Mesha Chachma. And here he's going to do something very interesting. And we're, and we're going to be able to use this uh, to understand a different reason for this mitzvah. What the Mesha Chachma does here, uh, well, he, he mentioned his Apasuk in Shemot. The Pasuk in Shemot says as follows Vayanu kol ha'am yachdav, vayomu kol asher diber Hashem na'ase. Everyone answered together. Everything that God said, we will do. What the Mesha Chachma wants to understand is that's not true. Right? Not everyone can do every mitzvah. We just saw it right now. A Levi can't do a Kohen's mitzvah. A Kohen can't do a Levi's mitzvah. I can't do a mitzvah for a Kohen or a Levi. There are all sorts of restrictions as to who can do certain mitzvot. So what does that mean that they said together, Naaseh, that we're all going to do the mitzvot? It's not possible. It's just not possible. So here the Mesha Chachma teaches us a very, very important yesod of, and a very, very beautiful idea. Everyone answered together and said, everything that God said we will do. Says, Wait a second. There are some mitzvot which are kohanim and some levim which we just saw. Some only apply to the Kohen Gadol and some only apply to the Melech. Or the Sanhedrin, or to members of the Sanhedrin. Some only apply to someone who owns a home or owns land. However, when it comes to the Klal, all of the people, then it's possible to do all the mitzvot. When it comes to all of us, if we all do what we're each supposed to do, then we will have all the mitzvot covered. Right? And so when I do a mitzvah that doesn't apply to someone, that person gets some of the reward. And if another person does in the mitzvah that doesn't apply to me, but since I'm part of the group, I get part of the reward. The Pasuk in Yecheskel says, you are the flock that I look after. You are Adam. What does that mean, you are Adam? So the Midrash says, Tzadikim liban shal Yisrael. The righteous are the heart. V'yesh kerosh, v'yesh ka'ayin. Some of us are like the head, some of us are like the eye. V'yesh kerosh, v'yesh You have verses in the Torah that talk about the head of the congregation, the eyes of the congregation. Everyone has to do the mitzvot that apply to them. And what happens when we do that? Then we are a complete Adam. That's what the Pasuk says. Right? We, then we become one complete person. Now, what about mitzvot that we can't do? Not because I'm not a Kohen or a Levi, because there's no Beit HaMikdash. Right now, there's no mitzvot. There's no way for us to have, to, to offer Hashem the full package of mitzvot. What am I supposed to do? So the Meshach says something so beautiful. He says, then we have to learn about the mitzvot. 
by learning about the mitzvot, like today, we're learning about mitzvot that really don't apply. By learning about mitzvot that don't apply, we get credit as if we've done them. Uh, here it is. Anyone who learns about the rules of the carbon chatat, it's as if they brought the carbon chatat. Or to strengthen those who could learn Torah. That's why later in the Torah, it says Naseh and Nishma. The first time around, it said Naseh. And it says, in terms of Naseh, it says, we will all do. Well, that's right. When we're all able to do, we all do the mitzvot that apply to us, and it's as if the whole package has been delivered. Then later the Torah says, Naseh and Ishma. We will do and we will hear, which means we will learn about the mitzvot, even when we can't do them, because let's say there's no Beit HaMikdash, or we're not in Eretz Yisrael, by learning about them, it's as if, as, as if we had done them. Yesh mehem shena aseh ma shayach etlo, v'yeshe nishma shenilmad v'navin, some who can some, we all do the mitzvot that apply to us, and some also will hear and learn v'navin p'nim yotam b'lchotayim, they'll understand the details of the mitzvah and the laws of the mitzvah. Aval kan anu kol ha'am yachtav kol ha'shedi b'rashem na'aseh. However, in the pasuk that he's talking about, in Yitro, that everyone will do and listen. Shebechalut ha'am ke'echad kulam yachtav ya'asu kol ha'shedi b'rashem we will all eventually end up doing everything that God says because we all are connected to each other. Everyone has to do that which is relevant to them. So that's another, another possible explanation of this, meaning this mitzvah is to remind us that everyone has their own tafkid, everyone has their own special uh, role that they play. And I don't have to be worried about filling someone else's role. All they have to do is my role. If I do my role well, then it's as if, and everyone else does their role well, I have provided a full package, if you will, of mitzvot to HaKadosh Baruch to God. Okay, Shula, please unmute yourself. I saw you had a hand. Unmute, please. We still, you're still muted, Shula. Nope, we still cannot hear you. Click unmute. We'll I'm give sorry, you I was talking as if I, um, my, my um, uh, question is, um, I'm not a question, notice that actually, all the mitzvot, Bet HaMikdash belongs to the all of Bnei Israel, And the Kohanim and Anvim, whatever the mitzvah that they're doing, they're not doing it uh, on, for their own benefit. They're doing it for, for, for us. So uh, um, that's... Um, that's beautiful. That's what I, I mean. That, um, very nice. Yeah, that's right. That's true. They are doing it for us. They are the shlichei of the, 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 the shlichim of the kihila. Yes, absolutely. I was gonna say this explanation kind of reminds me of you know lo alecha hamlacha ligmor, like we each just have to do our part, and the whole is bigger than the parts. Right. Exactly. Exactly. We do have to finish our part, but you're right. We can't do everything exactly, and that's what um, and that's uh, what the Meshach Chachma says here. Kol Yisrael Arvin Zelaz, we're all responsible for each other. So now that that brings on a whole new meaning for us. If I don't do the mitzvot that are incumbent upon me, technically speaking, you could argue someone else is going to suffer, right? Because we're all connected. We're like one body. Excellent. Okay, I want to just show you how halacha uses this concept. If you remember up above, we had this interesting sort of colorful phrase that a, a pot of two partners does not get hot or cold. So let's just look at one halachic application of that. 
There's a general prohibition against knocking down a Beit Knesset before the new one is built. Now, the concern there is because maybe you'll never get around to building the new one and you won't have a dignified place to daven. So you're not allowed to knock down the old one before the new one is built. However, so the Shulchan Aruch says that here, Ein sotrin beit ha-knesset, they live no beit ha-knesset, acher shema ya'are lahem ones, shelo yivnu ha-acher, elabonim acher tchili v'achakach sotrin ha-yashah. You're not allowed to knock down a shul before we build a new one because something may happen, and therefore the new one won't be built and we'll, we'll be without a shul. So if they have to build the first one and then, and then, the, and then you can knock down, the, you have to build the, the new one, then you can build down, build, knock down the original. However, the, the Shulchan Aruch says there is an exception to this rule. What do you think the exception is? Anyone? If you have well, to build it on the, the same, same property? Okay, maybe practically there's no other place to build it. That could be. The Shulchan Aruch says the one, one possible uh, exception is that the current building is dangerous, right? You can't leave it up because it's dangerous. So the Shulchan Aruch says, if, if the first building is dangerous, the, the walls are leaning in, the ceiling's collapsing, the foundation is weak, then, then he says you could build the new one, you can knock it down, and at simultaneously start building the new one as quickly as you can, so you don't, so you minimize the risk of of not finishing the first project. So then a question was asked. A similar, a question was asked by in the Har Bissamim. There they're talking about a, um, they're talking about a women's section. And in this women's section, they, they, uh, they want to knock down the shul in the women's section to build a better shul, okay? So technically speaking, the, the halacha of the Shulchan Aruch should, should be operative here. Right? It's not dangerous. Or if it's not dangerous, build a new one first. So it comes along the Harib B'Samim and says, Nachzor l'nidan she'latenu b'ha nechitna u'b'ha salikna d'b'vaday shari l'mochro al pizayin tu b'ha ir v'yachlu l'mochro l'balei ha'makomot sh'yikmi v'takanesa l'chadasha Let's say, as, uh, as was mentioned, you need the land. You need to build a bigger shul. And you need the land where the old shul is to build a bigger shul. So you're allowed to knock it down. Why? Because the, the, the Atsei B'Samim says that's like... Um, a house or a room that has holes in it, that's breaking, that's unsafe. Since we know that communal work could be likened, like we said before, to a stew with two cooks. So really, this, the building is not in such disrepair. It can be built. It can be fixed. What's the problem? It's a public building. And you have no one person to go to, to say, I need money for new light bulbs. I need money for a new floor. I need money for a new roof. It's like a kadeira. It's like a pot, debay shutfu, with two partners. And what gets done when there's a pot with two partners? Nothing. 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 And so similarly, if you have this building that's in disrepair, but can be fixed, if I go ask uh, this person, this person may say, no, go to that person. And that person may say, go to a third person because it's communal funds. And therefore the, the room is never going to get fixed. It's never going to be safe. He says, okay, knock it down. Right? Or if it's too big, you also could say, knock it down. Because trying to figure out who's going to pay for the repairs of the building that's too big it's like pulling teeth because everyone passes the buck. Or in our case, everyone forwards the email and says, can you deal with this? Can you deal with this? Can you deal with this? 
And since that's going to happen, we, re we relax the general prohibition of not knocking down a shul before the new one is built in order to take it, in order to recognize the validity of the statement that the, that the, kids, that the Sefer Achinuch said, that when there's more than one person to do a job, it doesn't get done. So if you knock down the building, or if before you knock down the building, you need to go get money from a bunch of people, you're never going to get it. Because everyone's going to, you know, have something else that they have to do, and you're not, never going to be able to get the money. So we see here that this cute idea that a, a stew with two cooks doesn't, um, that never gets cooked, nothing happens. We see that plays itself out uh, in halachic, uh, in halachic ways uh, as well. Um, so there you have it, my friends. The prohibition of a Kohen doing a Levi's work and a Levi doing a Kohen's work. The one answer given by the Shulchan Aruch, by the Sefer Achinuch, is that because nothing will ever get done. The reason given by the Shulchan Aruch, um, well, another reason that we gave is everyone should stay in their lane, do what they have to do, and if everyone does what they have to do, we'll be able to offer the most beautiful, the most full package of mitzvot to God. Kol Yishol Arim Zelazeh. I give some of my reward to someone else, someone else gives a little bit of their reward to me, and we're all made up into a whole person, the whole community. That's the second possible example, reason for this mitzvah. And the third, and the, 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 nation, the notion we said about the pants, about the, um, excuse me, about the, um, about the shul that needs to be um, knocked down, there we see that um, if there's a real problem that it's not gonna get done because there are too many cooks in the kitchen, then we, uh, we have, we're allowed to forego that rule and knock down the shul first because we take serious this idea that uh, more than one uh, person in charge, um, usually nothing gets done and better. And, and, and since the whole point of the rule was to make sure that the shul did get fixed and did get built, when the rule itself serves as a hindrance, there's a stumbling block to having that done, we have to relax the rule. Okay, my friends, that, that is it for the day.